Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, we're going to discuss the major evolutionary innovation in the more advanced modern fish called the teleos. This key innovation resulted in the origin of the most diverse group of living vertebrates today. This evolutionary innovation involved a new mechanism of feeding and a change in the organization of the anterior bones of the skull involved in feeding. In sharks and other chondrichthians, the bite of the jaws is accomplished by a series of cartilaginous bones that move to open and close the jaws, as well as push the upper and lower jaw forward when this involves the hyomandibula, it's called the holostelic jaw, which we've already discussed. In the early ray fin archaeopterygian fish, the jaw was only a single joint involved in the opening and closing of the mouth. We see this in the late Devonian fossil fish Mimi Piscius, which in which the maxilla is fully fused onto the skull and it supports teeth. This is like what we find in early tetrapods and in the lobe fin sarcoptrygian fish and in vertebrates, including you and me. Several primitive living acoptrygian fish actually still retain this primitive, simple type of bite, such as in gars, the genus Leptiosteus, in which the maxilla and the dentary are elongated and they support rows of teeth on both bones. The jaw joint is a simple joint that opens and closes the jaw. Now in Amia, the living bowfin, and in fossils of the family Amidae that date back to the Mesozoic, we start to see the mobility of the maxilla bone for the first time. In this specimen, we can see that the maxilla bone has slipped down, and this is because within this group of fish, there's a joint that allows the maxilla to move down and up. This is close to the teleos condition, but not quite. Now the maxilla, by moving downward, fans out to provide a larger net in which to capture prey in the water. In Amia, we don't yet see the pucker fish-like mouth that later teleos are able to make. In very advanced teleos, the maxilla bone becomes a totally different bone, a bone that only operates as a joint to extend out the premaxilla into a pucker, pushing the premaxillary bone forward. This opens up the mouth into a pucker-like tube for quickly sucking in prey and food from the water. It also provides a great deal of mobility of the mouth. Now you've likely seen this major innovation in feeding when you fed your pet goldfish. The maxilla bone pushes out the premaxilla, forming this wide open mouth that sucks in the food down into the throat. In teleos, the maxillary bone, as well as the dentary bone, no longer serve as the primary tooth-bearing bones. They become involved in providing this pucker to the mouth. Now, several new bones are also added in more advanced forms, such as the kinoethmoid, and these anterior skull bones are really very mobile, and they're not fused to the rest of the skull. In fossils, they often dislocate. We can see how during the opening of the mouth, these bones are not tightly joined, but are separated by skin, tendons, and muscles that serve to open the mouth into this large basket or net. Now there's two key things to think about with the origin of teleos fish and their great diversity. The first is that the mouth is composed of very mobile bones that can be adapted to a great variety of feeding strategies. And second is that the teeth are no longer just associated with the maxilla, premaxilla, and dentary, but they become more associated with these structures in the throat, including the tongue, the roof of the mouth, and even the gill arches. Now the classification of the major groups of teleos fish 
is based on the evolutionary changes that occurred in the development of teeth located more posterior in the throat and tongue of teleos fish. In the next video, we'll quickly summarize the various groups of teleos fish and their fossil record. For now, be sure to diagram the feeding strategies employed by chondrichthians, the primitive actoptrygian fish, and the more advanced teleos type fish, and be able to describe the, the evolution of the fish pucker, the fish face. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin Links are found in the description below.